Hello and welcome all to Persopa Insights. My name is Taylor. This is going to be the first in a series of guides to human phenotypes. Now, if you want to learn what phenotypes are, you can check out my video explaining phenotypes and concepts and how it works. In biology, the term phenotype refers to the physical expression of genetic characteristics. The actual mixture of genes themselves is called the genotype. So phenotype can be just about any sort of physical feature. But in this context of human phenotypes, we are referring to certain human genetic clusters and ethnic groups that have distinct physical appearances. Now, why then do we say phenotype and not just race? Well, race is a very complicated concept that tries to sort of smush together a bunch of different somewhat related but also not concepts into one big term. The term phenotype is much preferred nowadays because it gets down to the meat of the matter and it's really narrow in definition down to just physical appearance as a proxy for genetic inheritance and group belonging. So with all that being said, today we will be talking about the alpinid phenotype a very well-known phenotype, very common, widespread. And without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so let's describe the physical appearance of the typical alpinid person. They are going to have paler skin with darker hair and eyes, brown, maybe black hair, brown eyes, maybe going green or blue if they're more mixed with a Nordic sort of type person. Their real defining features are in the skull and body. They have broad and short skulls. They're actually high vertically, but if you look at it from the top, it's a pretty broad and short going this way, as you can see here. And they often have pretty high foreheads and they have short and stocky bodies. A lot of times their limbs will be short proportional to their torsos as well. And facially, they'll have pretty round, somewhat flat faces with short snub noses. Okay, so since we know what these people look like, who are they? Where do they come from? What people are they associated with? As you can see here, you can find alpinids pretty much all throughout Central Europe and elsewhere. The core of their range is throughout Central France, up through Southern Germany, and in the Alps, of course, hence the name. Switzerland, Austria, you find a lot of these people here. This seems to be a population associated with farmers, people who live very stable, static, and stationary sort of lives, staying in one village their whole lives, uh, especially in these isolated Alpine valleys in Switzerland and Austria and elsewhere. There is also a Celtic connection. In a lot of older sources, you will see this referred to as a Celtic type. They find broad and short alpine skulls in sites associated with historic Celtic cultures. But I believe that this is a spurious connection and it has to do more with correlation than causation. Now, the Celts were, of course, an Indo-European or Aryan people. They were a subgroup they came out from probably around the Ukrainian steppe somewhere and spread out as one of these initial waves conquering Europe. There were people in Europe before the Indo-Europeans. There were two main groups, the Western hunter-gatherers and the early European farmers. Early European farmers are connected more with the Mediterranean phenotype. The Western hunter-gatherers are what was called Cro-Magnon man. Broad skulls, big, heavy brow ridges, and it is believed that this is actually the ancestral population of Alpinids. It is believed that over time, living these stable, stationary farmer sort of lifestyles, these Paleolithic hunter-gatherers from the West and the Atlantic gradually developed softer, shorter bodies. They didn't need to endure the brutality of Ice Age hunting, fighting mammoths, and since they were now settled farmers. And so their bodies adapted to that new lifestyle, and you get alpinids. And the reason why there's a perceived connection between this group of people and the Celts is simply due to the fact that the Celts were the first to show up in many of these places. And there were only a few of them. They conquered the native people, gave them their Celtic languages, but the native people retained their original genetics and their original appearance, maybe getting a bit of red hair or green eyes here and there. Now, given that they are such an ancient type, going back possibly to the Paleolithic, well into prehistory, the Alpinids show up a lot in European history, all the way back to the Paleolithic, the Cro-Magnons, the Western hunter-gatherers, these Hamitic people, who come up from the Atlantic. We find the earliest human depictions, which are these Venus statues, very large, rotund women with these rounded heads. They do have more of an alpine look. You don't see these depictions among the Mediterranean, early European farmers, among Anatolian farmers, or among the Aryan 
Yemeni people from the steppe. And that may have to do with cultural values, more sky worshippers than earth worshippers, but I think it has a lot more to do with the phenotypes that were around, simply that the Aryan Norded type and the Mediterranean types are much thinner types. They have longer and narrower skulls, thinner, smaller bodies. Alpinids are the main people in Europe who are going to be the ones who are going to get stocky uh, and get kind of large and endomorphic like that. And if we follow this chain of looking for large, heavy set people as potential Alpinid groups throughout European history, we can look to the Etruscans. The Romans were very critical of the Etruscans, of course, after conquering and destroying them. They described them as obese, and they said that a lot of their more decadent pleasures, uh, aerospace and gladiator combat, came from the Etruscans. And it seems like there is a, an Etruscan Alpinid correlation. We still find a lot of Alpinids throughout that spine of central Italy, especially up north around Tuscany, which is where the Etruscans originally lived. And the Etruscans were, of course, a pre-Aryan, non-Indo-European people who spoke a language totally unrelated to Indo-European. But of course, the Romans, even though they were Aryan or Indo-European, still had many Alpinids among them due to intermixing with the local population. You can see some examples going through here of Roman busts that show very strongly an Alpine phenotype. Then throughout the Middle Ages, we see the Alpine phenotype proliferating more and more. Again, throughout Germany and France, they form a really strong core of that population. And Germany, among the more Catholic areas towards the south, France kind of all throughout, and then scattered throughout the rest of Europe as well. Again, a very strong element in Italy. You can look at someone like James Gandolfini or other Italians or Italian Americans to see this Alpine element really carrying strongly through. If you want to look at some of the most impactful Alpinists throughout history, you have to look, uh, of course, to a German Catholic turned German Protestant, Martin Luther himself was an Alpinid, as well as another famous or rather infamous German, Adolf Hitler. He was not a pure Alpinid, he was what's called a subnorded, which we'll get into later. Alpine with some uh, non Alpinid, Norded mixed in, very typical Austrian type. He has a very Austrian look. And interestingly enough, Mussolini, also Alpinid, but this time mixed with some of that Italian Mediterranean stock. Now, speaking of mixed types, the Alpinids are very centrally concentrated in Europe, so they have contact with a lot of different phenotypes. And as a result, lots of contact types or subtypes have developed between the Alpinids and other European phenotypes. Of course, the first type is the subnorded, which is what happens when an Alpinid mixes with a Norded, which happens most commonly around central Germany, western Germany, eastern France, that Alsace-Lorraine, Rhineland region. You find a lot of these subnordids there. They look pretty much like alpinids. They'll have slightly longer faces. The main trait is lighter hair and eyes. Then, of course, if you go down south on the other side of the Alps, where the alpinids meet the Mediterranean element there, you get the subalpinid. You get this alpine Mediterranean mixture. Joe Rogan, interestingly, demonstrates this phenotype. And then the last major one is that of the Kelto alpinid, which we can see in someone like. Mozart, even, which is a mixture of the classic Celtic Norded type, that red haired, green eyed, long faced, long nosed type that is very common in Britain, uh, associated with the bell beaker culture. When they come in contact with alpine types, you get this distinct contact type. However, Central Europe is not the only place where you will find these broad skulled, stocky, alpinid looking people. There are similar looking groups spread all throughout the rest of Europe and even into Africa and Asia. And it is believed that this is due to a process of convergent evolution, where similar conditions end up driving unrelated types into assuming a similar form. Or we can infer maybe that the alpinid shape and appearance is the most perhaps energy efficient shape to have if you're a settled farming population. Because like with the West Alpinids, which is the technical term for that Central European main alpinid group, we find these types a lot more in peasants, not really in the noble castes or elite strata of these countries. For example, in Eastern Europe, around Poland and uh, Western Ukraine, you have the Gorid type, which is sort of between Alpinid and that more Eastern, Asian, Northern influenced Baltic type you find among Slavs. In Scandinavia, you go Northwest from there, you have the stranded type, uh, which is found on beaches and in these fjord valleys among these scattered village populations. And you do see an influence from this type in Scandinavians like Notch or Greta Thunberg, 
who do not have that stereotypical long-faced, blonde, tall, Scandinavian look, and it's because they have that alpinid element in them. In Turkey, and throughout Anatolia, into Armenia, and other places, you have an East Alpinid look that, again, developed most likely from convergent evolution. Again, all these types are mountain types. You find all these people in mountains, whether it's in Scandinavia, southern Poland, central Europe, or Anatolia. These are all mountainous regions inhabited by very ancient farming populations. And the last group of mountain-dwelling farmers who have developed into an alpinid-looking type are going to be the African alpinids of Morocco and Algeria. These seem to have evolved from the Berber type, which was a Cro-Magnon-like type, possibly related to Cro-Magnons, uh, that then experienced a convergent evolution into an alpinid sort of shape. So I hope that was an informative video, sort of giving you the basic rundown on the alpinid phenotype, one of the most significant phenotypes out there. If you are a Westerner uh, living in America or Europe, you probably know people with this phenotype. And of course, I will be doing more videos on this. We will go through the rest of the European phenotypes and then start going into Asia, Africa, America, and elsewhere. If you want to learn more about phenotypes or related topics, you can check out my website, prosopainsights.com. That is also where you can get a consulting session scheduled with me. This has been Taylor from Persopa Insights reminding you to always judge a book by its cover. Thank you for watching.